Hey guys, this is Gaijin Hunter, and on January 10th, they held the Monster Hunter Festa 2016 event in Tokyo, Japan. This is the sixth time that they're doing it, and it's an annual tournament for Monster Hunter that takes place at various locations throughout Japan. There are five locations, and this is the first one, which was in Tokyo. Basically, Monster Hunter Festa is a game show for Monster Hunter. It only takes place there in one day, and they have a big tournament where they have teams pair up and do time trials to see which team is the fastest hunters in Japan. The winners from each of the five divisions then come together for the big final, which this year will be in mid-March. It took place in Kaihin Makuhari, which is actually the same location as the Tokyo Game Show. It's just outside of Tokyo. This is the venue around 9.30 in the morning. It started at 10, and there were already over a thousand people lined up. So what you see over here is a line for the actual contestants. A lot of people compete and then they take the top eight teams for both parent and child combination team, female hunters, and also anyone goes kind of general. And then they all compete on stage at the end of the day. This here is Mr. Kojima-san. He is the producer of Monster Hunter Cross. He was there on hand to greet the press as they came in. And this is what greeted us, a very long but organized line of people waiting for the event. <laughs> it's a lot of people. Needless to say, if you had no street passes, I'm sure you could have got 999 in one day. Now one thing that really always surprises me about Monster Hunter is the immense diversity in the crowd. There's an equal mix of both males, females, older people, younger people, families, couples, people there are alone. It was really great. Okay, coming in, you're greeted with this new fancy artwork that they created specially for the Monster Hunter Festa. Very nice. We later got a postcard for that, which was cool. You can see it's just a really open hall with a lot of different things to do. Luckily, they were allowing for filming, so I was able to capture a lot of what I was doing. On the wall, they had an updated size chart showing all the monsters, including ones from Monster Hunter Cross. I later bought that. They had a lot of photo opportunities. You can get your picture taken having the cheese fondue. You can have couples who are doing the wonderful new yay motion with the Dino Valdo. Friends were having fun taking pictures of themselves being trapped in Tamamitsune's bubbles. There was a huge Ryzex which you can then pick up a longsword or dual blades or an insect glaive and pose with it. There was even a perspective down one where they would go and they would take the picture from above and it looks like you were being grabbed by Gamuto. This is the postcard that they give, so basically this is a stamp rally, so if you go over here and you find the stamp points, go ahead and collect all four and at the very end of the day they give you the official postcard with that art that you saw when you walked in the building. If I knew that they were going to let me keep the card, I would have stamped it a little bit better. <laughs> As with all the other shows, they always have some life-size armors on display. The big one this time was the Dino Valdo armor, looking really sharp. Then they even had a kid section, so if the kids wanted to go and jump around and uh, do that, or even an infant section over here with just dolls of poogies and felines, which I thought was a nice touch. I think that's new for this year. Then over here in the entrance, we had some demo areas. We had Monster Hunter Explorer, the smartphone game here in Japan. We had the Rockman Classic series, that's Mega Man. Um, which is already out in the West, but it's coming out here in Japan soon. If you played it, you get these cool postcards. I really wish I would have played it. They had a life-size uh, of the mascot from Monster Hunter Stories called Nabiru. It's a very weird-looking feline. And they also had a Monster Hunter Stories on display as well, which they told everybody it was just a Tokyo Game Show version, but they did show off a really wonderful new trailer. We're talking writable Nargakuga, guys. Um, hopefully they'll release the trailer in the next day or two, and then I can share with everybody. In the middle of the hall, they had a lot of concept art. A lot of design stuff, final art like this, um, illustrations done by famous artists, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So if you follow me on Twitter or Tumblr, I have posted some of the pictures, but they were just simply too many to share. They were also given away a special download quest, which will be available later in February, but you can get it here early. It was just for the Monster Hunter Fan Club t-shirts. They had a Twitch stage where they were doing some live Twitch shows later on that day. Now, as you can tell, there were a lot of people. It was starting to pack in. This is about 10.30. This is everybody lined up to get the download quest. And then they were already starting the talk shows. Now, one cool thing is they had a gathering hall area where you can just sit down and play with other people. 
and if you landed a rare material in your results screen, they would write your name on the board, and they're going to see how many of these complete sets they can do for both Tokyo, Osaka, and the other venues, and then see which one kind of had the best luck at the end. I'm not sure if we get anything, but it is kind of a cool game. This is kind of an overview of the back of the hall. You had that stage, you had this huge food corner with some really nice Monster Hunter themed foods. Unfortunately, it was really crowded, so I wasn't able to get any pictures. You even had some people in some really interesting outfits. This girl was ecstatic because her fan art was displayed on the wall where you can vote on who had the greatest fan art. And here's just another look at all the different kind of Hamsa art that they had. They had, again, pictures, they had some really rough sketches, um, which they included in the official guidebook, which you can buy. Um, and also just some really cool armor final uh, illustrations. It's Dino Valdo, it's the male Gamuto, that is the male uh, Ryzax. Very cool. Then over here was the greatest thing of the entire show, which was it was a place where people who didn't have their HR cap broken and were having trouble on a quest could go and get help from other hunters. So they had two lines. They had one for the helper hunters, which were people who broke the HR cap and were willing to do any quest. Then they had a line for people who needed help. So I went ahead and did this for about an hour, just helping out some kids and some other adults with some quests that were bothering them. And at the same time, they were recording um, this podcast show, so it wasn't just waiting in line doing nothing. You can see over at the shop, before stuff sold out, it was very, very crowded. Here I am lined up to help a hunter. Over there, next to the stage in the back, was the area where they were doing the tournaments. This is, they had a special challenge stage where you can take on Nargakuga, and if you won, you got some stickers, which was cool. And I believe they were also doing the preliminaries for the final contest there. You can see all the people lined up. So that's where really the magic was going on there. This is where all the best times were being placed, and the top eight teams got to go on stage later to do the final tournament. Here's Master Hunter Cross producer Kojima-san going out to greet everybody before the final contest. This is also the guy who I delivered the message of Master Hunter Cross for the West, so hopefully they're working on it. I really do hope so. And you can see here in the afternoon, it was already really filled out. There was a lot of people, so you kind of had to line up um, for quite a long time. But the cool thing was those people were hunting uh, next to each other as they were waiting, which was cool. So now it was time for the finals between the parent child and also the female hunters. Lots of people sitting down lined up playing and watching. And for the final, they had to take on a Gor Magara, and the final female hunter team was really fast with 3 minutes and 53 seconds. Under pressure and against that monster, that's a huge accomplishment. For the deeds, they get a special plaque to commemorate their victory. They get special jackets from the Monster Hunter fan club, which you can only get for winning this tournament. And they get some goods, and they get invited to the championship in March. So good luck to the Tokyo Team Girls. Some final messages.
There was a small break before the finals uh, for the big championship, and if you notice, the store was practically dead. At this point, all the major exclusive stuff was already sold out, so it was really easy to go in there and buy some keychains and stuff like that. And now it was time for the finals. This is the actual final, so you can skip ahead if you don't want to watch this, but watch the bottom right two screens. That is the winning team. They took on Adino Valdo for their championship, and they did amazing. Aerial Insect Glaive and Greatsword were the popular combinations for all the teams that were in the top. One thing to note is that this is a set quest for the arena, so they're not using their own gear. These are predetermined weapon sets. So everyone on an equal playing field. This is the winning team here. Now one of the common strategies for everybody was to make sure that Dino Valdo stayed in the middle. So if he went up on top of the ledges, most of the players just would take the time to lure him back down because if you fought him up there, your time would become much worse. Really fantastic greatsword work here with the kick, the slap, and the strong charge, waiting and then nailing it. Watch how he holds off the delay here. So good. And with the mount, and he's using the absolute evade to get out of there. So you can tell these people practiced a lot. team which was the runner up they did a great job he was using the insect glaive to get stun damage with the bug and watch this KO here <laughs> who said the bugs are weak right And with the winning team, if you really watch, the Glaive user has really good evasion and positioning, so he's not really wasting a lot of movements. Now all the teams only had 8 minutes to kill Dino Valdo, but as you're going to see here, they did not need even a fraction of that. Here they're just playing it safe because really if you go and you try to engage him in the wrong area, it will really ruin your time. Great evade out of here to get back into position. Really, really good work. And good night, Dino. That is a fast time. <laughs> and the top team from Tokyo, Unshakable, got a fantastic time at 2 minutes and 33 seconds. So I can't wait to see what they do when they do the finals in March. So good luck, guys. Represent Tokyo. And that was the end of the event. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of home video look at uh, how it was, what a Monster Hunter Festa looks like. It was my first time going. It was really fun. Um, until next time, happy hunting.